Janelle Kay. I am a speech language pathologist and also an assistive technology specialist. I am Jack Barrasso. I'm an occupational therapist by profession and I'm also an assistive technologist. The thing is, of course, these are first responders. They, you know, they don't know this family, so it's This is an emergency communication board and it can be utilized with any individual who has difficulty communicating. You can always utilize this um, emergency communication board for those who need support for um, their ability to communicate. Now it's not just for uh, individuals with autism but for any other disabilities um, that have limited um, communication skills. And um, as you communicate with them, um, you want to point to corresponding pictures on here that go with your message. For example, oh, you need help? Okay, are you lost? So as you would talk with them, you're going to point to a message on here that corresponds to your spoken message. The use of this um, emergency communication board. So this is the part of that communication board and it actually has two parts inside. One that has the picture, we call it um, communication board in there, and then we have the um, alphabet board on the bottom. So for um, on how to utilize this uh, communication board, I suggest to hold it on the side so it's easy for you to really look at uh, what the um, AAC user or for the communicator to uh, what they're pointing. So uh, we use what we call modeling. So when we are trying to communicate this to the individual, um, it's good to just still say your whole sentence while pointing, pointing to the icon. So for example, if you ask for if they need help, you can say, oh, do you need help? Or you can always just say, oh, don't be scared. I'm here to help. So that's the important um, point when we're trying to model uh, this communication. It's also important to make sure to provide what, um, a 10 or 15 seconds wait time when we are communicating to a person. That gives them time to process what you're trying to communicate to them and that also gives them time to respond if they can respond uh, to your open-ended questions. If you're in another scenario and you see an individual maybe covering their ears, um, you can ask them, do you need headphones? And you can have them respond by saying yes or no, or maybe they'll select headphones to let you know. And even though we have a yes and no here, we always encourage an, an open-ended questions instead of a closed-ended questions. Again, um, those are important um, things to consider.